if you've ever had a moment where you had a drop on someone and they still beat you and you're just puzzled, big question marks over your head, right? How did they beat me? I outgeared them, but they still won. Well, today we're going to be breaking down some of these mechanics. We're going to be doing some myth busting. I'm also going to be showing you some things on what is going to give you a little bit more edge to your game. So this is a great video for you, even if you've been playing Bedwars for some time now, or if you're new to Bedwars, you definitely need to know these things. Ultimately, it comes down to different play styles. So first person versus third person. Is there a big advantage or disadvantage to both of them? I'm going to show you all of this. If you do me a huge favor, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's jump into it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my alt here. He's going to stand on the red block right here. Let's measure the block. So we got one, two, three, four. So he's four blocks away from me, right? Now, if I just equip the sword and swing, I, you notice where my mouse pointer is right here. I'm swinging, swinging, swinging. I'm not hitting him, right? I'm not hitting him. See where my mouse pointer is? Now, if I put my mouse pointer on him, there's a hit. It's incredibly important that you click on your target, especially in third person. If you're going like this and hoping you're going to hit him while he's clicking on you, you're over here. You can't even get near him. He's knocking you back. He's knocking you back. He's knocking you back. So that's why you got to click on your target. And if you can keep your mouse, what I like to do is I keep my, um, I hold down right button and I just keep my mouse on them. This is why it's important. You know, you just keep your mouse on them. Now unarmored, a wooden sword is going to do 20 damage as well. So keep an eye on that. But 20 damage is by default. So you need to hit someone five times for them to actually die, but you can't have too much of a break in between. If they run away, they're going to start regening. I'm going to show you this regen and I'm going to show you a timer on this. And you can see it heals eight at a time. If you're in combat, you got to get away and you have to get away enough for at least three ticks, three seconds. So that way you have one more hit on you. Another great tip is if you're being chased by someone, make sure you're clicking behind you because you're going to be able to keep them away. If they're chasing you this way, see where my mouse is? If they're chasing you this way, they're not going to hit you. That's why it's important when you're chasing someone, make sure you have their your pointer on them while you're chasing them. So you're going to get good range. You need to be four blocks, like I said, four blocks away, maximum. So again, he's right here. So that means I need to be right here. And again, if I'm chasing this guy this way, my mouse is over here, not gonna hit him. If I'm chasing him here, look it. Now let's talk about vertical range. All right, so we have a four block range, we know that. So if I'm right here, the question is, can I hit him when he's four blocks down? If I swing, obviously there's no way I'm gonna hit him. There's no way. If I tap on him from here, I'm not hitting him, right? Now let's go down one. Now if I tap on him, I can hit him. The vertical, or at least diagonal range, so I can hit him at three, I can't hit him at four. Now I'm gonna put him at the very block edge here and I can't hit him, it's the very block edge. Now I can if I go down one more. Now the next question is how high can I hit him? So if he's down here, how far can I hit him? Can't hit him, right? Let's go down one. We should be able to hit him now, three. So vertical block is gonna be three distance. So it's one, two, and three. Technically it's four, but it's not quite. So technically it's four, not quite from a vertical standpoint, it's three vertical. Now, of course, if he's down here, I'm not gonna be able to hit him, right? I think it's because we have a spherical collider and the height of that spherical collider is gonna be obviously at its greatest. Imagine a ball around my character. I'm gonna show you a circle. The greatest distance is always gonna be at the very edge of this ball, right? So imagine invisible lines here. And this is where your greatest reach is gonna be. Obviously dead center, it would be shorter here on the diagonal points. That's why it's only three. Imagine, like I said, a ball around your character. Now that you get the idea of the ball collider or at least spherical collider, it gives you an idea of your range, but you have to be clicking on them. So this is a clicking range. This isn't your sword. This is your ability, your range for clicking. So it's kind of basically like a raycast. We're going to also talk about your distance for clicking through. Now imagine this. I'm going to show you something, a little trick here. Okay. So I'm going to get my alts on the other side of this. So I'm clicking, 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 right? I can't hit him. He's just, he's just on the other side of this wall. I can't click him. I can't click him, right? Same for this guy. He can't hit me. You see the sword. It's not hitting him. Even if I were to click on him through here, I can't do it because he's got a wall on the other side. And that's purely because I believe what they're doing is raycasting across. So it's gotta be in line of sight. So see, I can see him. And now I can't. Now, if we take these blocks away like that, I still have a problem, right? I'm clicking on him, can't hit him. Sword's going right through him. Now, if you're like this, if you can see him, all you have to do is click on him. See that range? You're back to that range. Your, your face, your head has to be able to see the character. If your head cannot see the character, you can't click through them. So again, we'll get this character over here. Now there is an exception to this rule. I'll show you in a little bit. Um, once we hit bows, I'm gonna show you some tricks with bows you probably didn't know. So see how this is not working? Now, if I just knock this, now I can see him. Now I can click on him, boom. So if someone's walling in on you, for example, 
Someone's turtling in. You see this tactic all the time. I've shown it in a video too. I showed how to do this. This is a really good tactic for breaking beds. You wall yourself in really quickly. And the problem is as soon as they're in, they're like this, right? And you've seen this, you've encountered this yourself. All you need to do is show them once. You just need to see them and then click on them. That's how you kill them. As long as they don't block out again. If they do, then you're gonna have an issue. You can do the same thing above them and you can also just suffocate them. So if someone walls in, what you wanna do, you wanna um, place a block under them and you can do that and they're back out. Or if you just can't get them, maybe they're at a weird angle. Maybe they're like this, just block them out like that and they're dead. You know, you can sit there and click on them, but it's better to suffocate them if you can quickly. Before we head over to collision on the sword, I'm gonna show you one more thing that I totally forgot to show you is clicking works no matter where you're facing. So you could be facing away like this and they're gonna be completely confused how you're actually hitting them. And this is why comboing is such a thing. If you've ever heard of combo, people basically have these scripts or hacks where their character spins really fast and they can hit everyone around them. That's why you see those characters that spin around that are hackers. It's because they're spinning so quickly and hitting at the same time rapidly that they're hitting everyone around them. So no matter where you're coming from, you might see them facing away from you. I'm gonna get my DPI really high and I'm just gonna do this. You see, I'm still hitting them. So I just killed this character spinning around really rapidly. So if you have a bunch of players around you, put your mouse in the center like this, shift lock, and you can pretty much just destroy everyone that way. This is what comboing is. So you don't even have to hack in order to be able to make this work. So you can hit everyone around you. So you could drop yourself in, a, in the middle of a map and just spin around like this. You want to keep your mouse level, but you can pretty much destroy everyone around you. You're hitting everyone. And it's crazy. It's crazy to think about. And of course, a lot of players will auto-click with that. So they're auto-clicking while spinning around. So that's why sometimes it looks like someone's hacking when they're not really hacking. They're just exploiting. I call that an exploit. The next thing is to show you the cone effect for standard without clicking on someone. So say for some reason you can't click on someone, your accuracy is really bad, then it's not going to be a good idea to be moving your mouse around on screen. Like you certainly don't want to be doing this, you know, clicking on people like this and your mouse is just going everywhere. You know, it's better to kind of, what I like to do is hold down. So you see how my, my camera is moving. I like to kind of aim this way. It's probably not going to be the smartest. It's definitely better just to move your mouse around. The problem is you can't turn and see what's behind you if you have to counter someone behind you. So I like to use right mouse button. Um, some people will do this and then they'll, they'll shift the camera and then do this. And it's just kind of sloppy to me, you know, because otherwise you're doing this and then you can't spin around on someone. So let me show you what I mean by that. So say I'm like, you know, fighting someone on the bridge and I see someone behind me, I can go like this and I can hit them without really moving my mouse. Alternatively, if you're you're fighting people on the bridge and you're clicking on them, clicking on them, maybe there's someone above you, click, 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 someone below you, click, click, click. And then you turn around and you could do it that way. Oops, I just won. My bad. <laughs> so we covered the clicking, right? So how far you can actually click on someone to hit them. Now let's talk about the collider damage. So what can your sword naturally hit without clicking on someone? So obviously when I say clicking, that's like that, but without clicking, how far do you have to be or how close can you be before that happens, before your, your sword can actually hit a player? And it is three blocks. It's simply three blocks. Now I'm gonna show you vertically because it is different. Even if I jump up and down, I'm gonna be hitting them. And you'll see a lot of people jumping up and down. It does help sometimes, but it doesn't help as much as you think. You need to actually be outside of their view in order for it to work. So let me show you vertical. So now I'm going to be one block up. And you're going to notice we can still hit each other. So I'm still hitting them, right? One block up. That's because it doesn't matter if I'm down here or up here, even because you can notice if I jump, I can jump two blocks. So you're about three blocks up. If I were to do this, you're going to notice something different. I'm two blocks up. So I'm going to, I'm going to swing. Notice I can't hit him. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to be behind him. See how I'm like, I'm not hitting him. I'm in the same range as before. Even if I face away from him again, right? Not hitting him. I'm going to face away from him again. If it's spherical, then I would be hitting him, right? That's why. But if I were to click on him, obviously it worked. By the way, my opinion is the dev should remove the clicking part, you know, and I've, I've brought it up to them. I don't know that they want to change that. I think the clicking part was all, you know, really for mobile players initially, but you notice that there is a huge advantage if you know how to click on someone. If you know your aim, if your aim is good, you're definitely going to have a better advantage. Now, the question is, is first person. If you're a first person player like me, you're going to be very, very sad in a moment. I'm going to show you some stuff, but um, let's go back here. We're going to reset. So I'm going to show you up here again, not damaging them, right? Click, click, click. Now let's get them two blocks away. Still missing. Can't hit them. Can't hit them. And this player down here can't hit me either. That's why jumping is important. Now, if I jumped as the bottom player, I can hit him. I'm going to show you that again. So as a bottom player, Boom, I can hit him. That's why it's important to jump. Now, this is why you'll see a lot of players use a strategy of the four blocks. So what they'll do is they'll go four blocks up. And sadly, as a bottom player, I can't reach him. So this player is directly over the block. I, I won't be able to hit him, see? But if I just step one block away, I can see them. 
and now I can hit them. So it really depends on the angle and visuals of a character. So if they're blocked, if they're just kind of, you know, over the block, I can't hit them. If you step back a little bit, you can hit them. And then if you step back to three, you should still be able to hit them because you can see them when you're jumping. See how I just hit them? So you need to, you need to be the right distance when you're hitting someone. Again, this is a little bit detailed, but if you're looking for understanding how to get someone, sometimes you can't, maybe you're doing this and you're not understanding why you can't hit them this time, step back so your head can see them. There's gotta be a line of sight. Think about, think about like a line, an invisible line, like a laser light that needs to be able to hit them. And, or, or like if you're, you know, you get a remote control that needs to be, have direct line of sight of the TV or the Roku, if you know what I mean. And you can't because it's blocked by something. So you need to be able to actually click on them and have that click. The line needs to hit them almost like a laser, right? So if the laser is hitting this instead of them, it's obviously not gonna work out. That's why you need to jump over and boom. If you're right here, you're never gonna get a direct line of sight. The raycast isn't gonna work. So that's why you need to be a little further back and it's gonna raycast from wherever you're clicking from your body to them. So that's the height right there. That's where you're going to hit them. So again, it's important that you know these things and how the mechanics work. But like I said, if you're just doing this, there's no way you're ever going to hit them. You, you can't. If you're the average player that doesn't know, you're not going to be able to hit them. And that includes this. See, I'm raycasting through the block. Now, if I'm at an angle, I can see them. So again, everything's all about visual sight. Say you're at the top here. The only way you're going to be able to hit this player is if you click on them. Otherwise, if you're using this standard sword collider, you're not going to be able to hit them no matter what. And even if they're right here, you can't hit them. And if I go down one, so that there's two blocks, I still can't hit them, you see? However, this player can jump up and hit me. So I can't obviously go down any further unless I jump down. So the player at the bottom has a, a huge advantage because they can obviously click on me or they can jump and, and swipe like that. So again, huge advantage from below, but this is why cliffside breaks are so good because if someone's down here breaking your bed and you're over here swinging, like a brand new player would, you don't know you can just click on them. Or if you're standing over here and you're trying to click on them and you can't, because even though I'm my alt is clicking on this character, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll put my alt down here. Say my alt right here and you're doing this and you're doing this and you can't hit them. You gotta be over them. See how easy that was? All you gotta do is just step off a little bit, be over them, boom, you're hitting them. But if you're doing this and you're like, I can't hit them, it's because you're not over them. Your your raycasting, your raycast is hitting the ground, right? Think about it at your head. So if your head is here, it's hitting and colliding against a block. Now let's talk about the cone range. I showed you a little bit of that from right here. I can't hit them, right? It's not hitting them. I think it's like a half pie. So imagine something like this. He should get hit in all these areas. Let's try this right here. There's definitely a hit. Now let's try it right here too. Just curious, because that's four blocks. It shouldn't work because we've been doing tests all day with this. Yeah, so it doesn't work right there. Now let's test right here. He's just in the corner here. Okay, it worked. Now let's test right here. Interesting. Okay, so let's test these corners. Still hit. Let's try that corner. Doesn't hit. So we know this is a dead space and that should be a dead space as well. Still a dead space. We're gonna try this one now. Test this one now. Dead space. So interesting. We're going to test this too because the sword is on the right side. We're going to see if it's different on the right side. Nope. Here's the reality. You can see here, this is the range. It's got really good range out here until you got the side. So if some, if you're just swinging right here and you think someone's going to hit you, you have to turn. It's a big box and, and it's one block down. We already know that it doesn't work two blocks. So it's only, if you're going to look at the collider, it basically looks identical to what I'm standing on upwards gonna look like this. So imagine this invisible box in front of you, but this is a good range. So you can see anywhere inside this red box area, I'll get these out. This is your average. So my sword can hit this area. Now, if I turn, obviously this entire thing's gonna turn with me. So that is the collider for standard sword. Now, the difference is, is if I were to do the clicking, obviously if I do the clicking, I can hit them, but you have to have no blocks in front of you, obviously. This is just symbolic of the colliders. Now, as far as the diagonals um, part of the clicking, um, I haven't tested that. Let's go and test that. I just forgot we didn't test that. This should be one, two, three, four. So we're gonna have them stand right over here. Question is, can I hit them diagonally too? Or do I have to face them? Yeah, so diagonal does not work. It's gotta be straight squares, straight blocks. So if I do one, one, two, three, four, versus one, two, three, and four, it's gotta be straight blocks but three will work. So that's gonna be important. If you, someone's diagonal to you, your range is gonna diminish. So that's why you wanna get a little closer here and it'd be four blocks, one, two, three, four. So it'd be right there. Although spherical should reach them. I don't know, that's a little weird, right? Some weird math there. So I know you wanna jump to bows. I really do too. But first we're gonna talk about first person effects of colliders. So we haven't even covered that yet. So similar issue, right? It's similar to if you were just clicking blindly. This is why first person is not as good. Check this out. 
However, let's do the four block test. We did this already, right? We can't hit them. First person, if we are clicking, we also have to be straight on them. It does work, but you have to be directly on them. Look at this, look where my mouse is. You have to click on the body. Look at the precision I have to be on. However, same goes for this. So the precision is much more needed, but instead of just moving your mouse to them real quick, you have to move your you have to move your crosshair to them. So it's a so it's much harder because you have a screen that's shaking, right? So like I could be doing this and it's easier to move because I'm zoomed out. But if you're zoomed in, everything's so close, right? This is why I really want them to um, add a FOV and I've bugged them for an FOV option is because as a first person shooter player, you should be able to stay in first person. Otherwise, what's the point of ever having first person inside this game? So this is why I recommend going third person if you can, because third person is gonna give you a way better range. You're gonna be able to see around you. You're not gonna get ganked, but it's just, it's kind of a pain. It's still kind of a pain because I like first person for bows. It just feels more natural. But again, it's the same issue as everything else and especially behind you you know someone's behind you you're gonna get ganked they're gonna get it they're gonna get the uh first hit advantage on you so first hit advantage by the way if you don't know what that is it's the first person that hits is typically gonna win a draw so if you're the first person to hit someone and you're getting the range on them by clicking on them more accurately you're gonna win that that battle so again on top of that if you have an auto clicker you're gonna win that battle um we'll, get, we'll cover auto clickers and such we're not gonna cover it just quite yet but i will tell you auto clickers do have a huge advantage in the game it lags the client out and i'll explain it let's go to bows now but at least you saw on first person a bit of a disadvantage on first person not huge um now let's go talk about bows so there's two ways you can you know use the bow obviously you can do it this way and it's much easier to get on range on someone you can see the line going through the player this is a really good range you're not really going to miss that much in this mode unless you obviously hit a little bit of the block so i'll just do a straight on shot we're going to go from this angle we're going to get a hit we're going to go for the head missed interesting missed why are the headshots missing look at this headshot and it should hit. Here's how you're gonna know whether or not it hits. I'm gonna show you something else. We're gonna see if the arrow travels through the body. If it travels past, then you know you didn't get a hit. That is how, the best way to know if you got a hit or if it's absorbing the arrow. So there is a, currently a bug in the game where the collider is broken. And I believe what happened is the devs um, reduced a collider, I think either on the body or something that is breaking the arrows. Um, arrows used to be way more accurate, but uh, they are not as accurate anymore. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna aim at the head again, just a little high. You see, if I were to go over them, you see the line of past them. So I'm gonna aim it right at his face. Now that went over, 100% went over. Went over, aim down a little bit. That absorbed absorbed. Now, if you're curious, I'm seeing the absorption on my other screen. This is not just me making this up. I'm going to switch screens so you can see as I shoot the head, what I'm talking about. So we're going to go over the head. This is over. See it passed. We're going to go down a little bit. Passed. We're going to go down a little bit more. Absorbed. No hit. Absorbed. No hit. Got a hit. Got a hit. Absorbed absorbed. Now what's happening, it looks like I went over, absorbed, hit. Now we're going for the shoulders, hit, hit. Now, so you can see clearly it's getting absorbed by the head. I don't know what's going on there. Let's get a little closer. We're going to switch um, views again. So we're going to get a little closer here. So one thing you're going to notice is the difference of where the arrow comes from. And you'll notice one weird thing is where it's coming from. It's like the center of your face. And I believe this is the same raycast, by the way, we were talking about earlier on the clicking. So see where it's coming from? Try to, let me try to show you. It's coming from your face. So this is the same raycast system as clicking. And essentially all it is is the difference is um, where the arrow goes. So we're really straight on on him. Now, if I were to zoom in, you'll notice it changes where it comes from. It goes from center, now it goes from right side. It's shifting. Now, I believe this is just a visual, by the way, but I'm not sure because, well, let me show you where it's drawing from. See, it's still showing, it draws from the center still. The other thing you'll notice is the crosshair is not accurate. See where the crosshair is and where the arrow goes. It's offset by a little bit, it's down and then to the right. So if you're trying to hit someone, make sure you're not trying to use the crosshair for your aiming on your arrows because chances are you're gonna miss them. So that covers the absorption issue. We don't really know exactly what's going on with it. It obviously is more consistent on the head. We've had it a lot on different body areas, um, often on the sword as well. And it could just be because it is a sword that we're hitting the sword and it's absorbing it instead of hitting the body. 
The other thing we haven't tested it is particular kits. Um, like if it's a particular kit or height. So like if you have a kit that is, or a character that is smaller than the collider, it could be an issue. Okay, so next up we want to talk about how to hit someone that's behind a block. So a lot of players don't realize this. They always call me a hacker whenever I do this, but it's not hacking. It's just how the collider works. So this is a player walled up and you got a bow and you, you want to hit them. So one thing you're going to notice is there is, see how the, their shoulders right there? You can actually hit them. There we go. Same can be said if they're in a corner like this. Let me show you this. So they're in this corner, right? You can see them, they're clearly, you can see a little bit of that when they're doing this. You can see the arm coming through. That's when you know their collider is sticking out in the corner here. So all you gotta do is shoot at that corner. There we go, we got a hit. So this is why a lot of players would call me a hacker because I know that their collider is sticking through the corner. Your arrows will also fly through friendlies. So what's cool about this is if you have, a, you know, maybe there's like a teammate here and maybe there's like three teammates here and one enemy here. What you can do is you can just shoot through them. So what I like to do is just shoot through my teammates at the enemies. Nice little thing if you're looking for some extra damage, especially if you're a barbarian. So, you know, let your arrows go through your teammates to enemies, especially if they're being chased by someone. It's a great because you can just shoot straight through them. So if they're being chased across the bridge by someone, you can just shoot right through them and you know you're going to get a hit. And also the longer you hold on your um, bow, the greater the knockback. A lot of people do these like little mini spams and those are fine, but you're not going to really get a big knock off them. So if you're trying to get someone on bridge fast, you can, you can also do a little bit of an angle, but you can get on target real fast if you go higher on your bow than lower. So if I were to do it straight on, see how I'm having to wait for it. But if I do this, then I go down. It's just how you process your aiming. It's just go up and then down versus going down and then up to get on target. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense because it's just it, it takes longer to get on target. So longer holds straight on, you're typically going to hit them unless they jump, unless they're jumping. If they're jumping across a bridge, chances are they're going to land back if you hit them. So they're going to jump off and then they're going to jump and they're going to land back on the bridge because they were already jumping midair. Now, if, now if you notice lately, players like to jump over arrows a lot, and that's because you're aiming straight at them, right? You're you're aiming you're aiming at their chest. So what I like to do is I like to aim for the head. This is why I get a lot of the issues where I'm getting absorption, but chances are they're going to be jumping as soon as they get across because a lot of players like to do this when they're crossing bridges right they're jumping and the problem is, is if you're shooting at their body they can jump over those arrows or if you hit them they can jump back on the bridge so what i like to do is i like to aim just above the head so so where i like to aim is i assume they're going to jump so i aim about their head height this is the issue with the absorption is i get a lot of absorption because of this but i like to aim for the head height um especially if they're coming across because if they jump i'm still going to hit their feet right so if they're jumping i'm not going to have an issue hitting them sometimes Sometimes they'll jump over if they're if you if you're aiming like this height they're gonna jump over your arrows as soon as you shoot right they're gonna jump right over them and you don't want that what you want to do is hit them midair because a lot of them will jump they'll also two block you'll you'll see some people do this right this is how they do it they bridge that way and it makes it really hard to get them because they're doing this across the bridge and generally speaking i don't really have issues still hitting them because i'm still aiming at their feet so when they're coming down and you can also time it all right, so that is pretty much arrows. Um, like I said, there's an absorption bug. I showed you it. Um, I would make it so that everyone has to basically be within that cone. You know, a lot of players, especially skill players, have used that to their advantage for so long. That's why I wanted to make a video on this because it is a huge difference. Now, this last one is bonus for you. This is not combat related thing, but it is kind of related to some stuff that you probably didn't know exists. So let me show you something here. So glass in Roblox is handled very differently. See how the camera's colliding here? And then if you go right here, the camera does not collide. So I'm gonna show you something real quick. So say someone puts a Tesla coil right here, I'm gonna show you. Especially with this recent trollage, a lot of players are doing this and they're getting like static and stuff with a bunch of Teslas behind your spawns like this. They do this a lot. I'm gonna show you how you can fix this. So obviously you can't hit it. You can't break it from here because you're, you're trying to break this glass. So what you do is you zoom out, move your camera on the outside and now you can break it. Super easy. So just a little tip here, you can break stuff through windows. You can also put TNT out there. So if you want to TNT someone through a window, this can also be done as from an attack perspective. See? So hopefully some of these tips were helpful to you, especially for those of you that haven't really been doing any kind of breakdowns and didn't understand that's how things work. Um, let me know in the comments below if it was helpful to you. That way I know, you know, especially if you want to see more videos like this one on advanced breakdowns of how things work. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next vid. Peace.